I'm Jane Mansfield. For the next couple of hours, I'd like you to come along with me. I want you to share some of the wild, way out experiences I had during my last trip around the world. I loved Rome. My trip started at the famous Spanish Steps, built by Olivari 500 years ago. And what do you think they're most used for? That's right, a place where lovers meet. By day, the tourists stand around, hoping to see movie stars. By night, the Roman lovers come out, ready for... Well, you know what happens when night and lovers get together. When I started walking down the steps, there were all these dark-eyed Italian men. Some of them were yelling things out at me. Maybe it was a good thing I didn't speak Italian. Who can resist Rome? The men are all handsome. And the ancient buildings are so beautiful. There's no other city like it in the world. I still had hordes of admirers following me when I saw the Fountain of Trevi. Oh, what a masterpiece. This is the most famous fountain in Europe. In the world, even. From the first time it was built, people have thrown coins in this fountain for good luck. Also, the legend is that if you throw a coin into the fountain, you will return to Rome. This nice stranger gave me three coins. I wish for a handsome man to cuddle me and to love me. I wish the world will never forget me and always love me. I wish, I wish that the legend was true and I would soon come back to Rome. As I signed all those autographs, I hoped my wishes would all come true. I headed for the Via Veneto. This is the most famous street in all of Italy. Here's where the tourists will see the movie stars from all over. Here's where dukes and counts and the ladies of the night all mingle. It's the street where you can get anything you want any hour of the day and night. I soon found out it's also the street where the men have hand problems. There was this fat guy breathing so hard, he drowned out the car horns. Out of the side of my eye, I noticed him staring at my backside. Suddenly, ouch! He pinched me. It hurt, too. Then I remembered that this was the Italian national pastime. Pinching girls. Every girl is fair game. This time I was tagged to it. I had to get out of there fast. A kind stranger grabbed my hand and we took off. Here it was, only a few minutes before two in the afternoon, and the wolves were on the prowl. The men are all too busy watching the girls. I don't know what you men see in girls that take so much of your time. After all, once you've seen a girl, isn't that enough? I mean, we all have the same features. But down there, on that warm day in Rome, the girls in their miniskirts and tight sweaters, well, they had the Italians goggle-eyed. There's a girl who's prepared. Serves him right. Serves him right, too. After all, he has a fine-looking wife. Isn't one woman enough? the nightmare of Rome. These pests make a living from photographing celebrities. They're absolute madmen when trying to get a picture. These gangs of street photographers have been known to do terrible things. Once they surrounded a starlet and ripped her clothes off. 
Then they stole the photos of her, saying she walked the Via Veneto naked for kicks. So you can see why we movie stars hate the paparazzi. Poor Ava Gardner, Anita Ekberg, Liz and Eddie, Audrey Hepburn. She never wants to come back to Rome. I made it to my hotel, safe at last. <laughs> then I had to laugh. It was photographs which made me famous. What a view. You just don't know how wonderful it is to be so many thousands of miles from home and be recognized by so many people. Roma. There's no place like Roma. Guido, my guide at the Forum, told me that on this very spot, Brutus killed poor Caesar. After all, Caesar was very close to Brutus. It wasn't fair that he was stabbed in the back by his buddy. I decided to see the wonderful Colosseum. I had seen many pictures of that famous place, where the early Christians were torn to shreds by wild animals. Strange, in the very city where the ancient Christians were murdered by Romans, the center of Christianity grew up. Walking outside the still standing ruins, I thought about the stories of the ancient orgies which took place after the games. The spectators would get all worked up after seeing the killings. The only way they could calm down was to go on a drinking and sex binge. Saturday night in Old Rome must have been just the living end. Oh, I'm glad I wasn't around then. I looked up at the now silent bleachers. The echoes of 2,000 years seemed to fill the Colosseum. I could hear the roar of the crowd. Suddenly, I was part of a great spectacle taking place over 2,000 years ago. Before me, magically, in some kind of unbreakable trance, ancient Rome awakened. Oh, it was majestic in all its splendor. And the gladiators those days were unbelievably strong. They could practically beat an army single-handed. Forget the good old days. I'll take what we have now. My next stop was the Olympic Stadium. There was a soccer game going on. If you think our American football is rough, you ought to see soccer. I didn't mean to break up their game. But suddenly, I was surrounded by 50,000 adoring, wonderful, handsome Italians. If I could have kissed each one, I would have. But I didn't have time that day. I was in love with Rome, and Rome was in love with me. Then I just had to look at the Park of the Gladiators. I couldn't get in. And no girl was ever seduced by a statue, right? Rome must have been getting to me. Because suddenly, I had another of those recurrent daydreams. I looked up at one of the statues, and he almost seemed human. I imagined what it would be like to actually be in the company of a group of gladiators. I'd have to choose my champion for the Roman games. The others would be very strong. Brutes, probably. I'd have a heck of a time choosing. Any one of them would be able to overpower me. I wondered if I would ever meet anybody who could be even a tenth the man those Roman gladiators were. They lived hard, died hard, and from what I've heard, they loved hard. 
I would have given anything to have been at an ancient Roman party. Most of the time they turned into orgies. My hero. He could conquer anything if he put his mind to it. Wow! A real dragon. And it has three heads. I haven't seen anything like that since the last time I had a hangover. He makes it. Oh, he cut off the dragon's head. I knew he would. How could he miss? Oh, he's so big and strong. My hero. Oh, that ferocious bull. I was so afraid. Just like one of those Spanish matadors. He grabbed the bull by the horn. I just can't stand the sight of blood. He could throw a bull, kill a dragon, and break a girl's heart. He was so big and so modest. I was invited to the Cannes Film Festival on the Riviera. I was sorry to leave the Turtle City. On the way to the airport, I noticed several girls standing on the roadside. I asked the driver if the girls were waiting for a lift. He said, they're waiting, but not for a lift. They're waiting for customers. Sure enough, a man stopped his car in front of one of the girls and seemed to be bargaining with her. I asked my driver to stop. I had to see this. My driver told me that although there is a pretty standard price, about 2,000 lira, it's customary to bargain. Otherwise, the prostitute feels some of the fun is taken out of the game. After all, they may be girls of the road, but they're still fun-loving Romans. Incidentally, 2,000 lira is about $3. I wouldn't work that cheap for anything. Well, the first man had made his deal. He sure must drive a hard bargain. Too bad that on this road, love had to be made a sort of thing. I've always insisted on romance. I shook my head sadly for the little man. He even came prepared with a blanket in case the ground was wet. How sad to think his poor wife is sitting home, doing dishes, feeding the kids. And here's her husband, just too sad for words. I couldn't wait to get to the Riviera. I decided that if they can go half naked, I could too. Let's face it, the human body is a wonderful thing. If you have a good figure, why not take advantage of it? Once again, I was in my own brand of heaven. Admirers flocked around me, demanding my autograph. Gosh, it's just absolutely Great being a star.
word is the word. Then I heard this absolutely way out music. My ears directed my body towards the sound. It was Rocky Roberts and the Airedales, one of the biggest name groups in Europe. There was one place I just had to see. The Isle of Levant. That famous nudist colony just an hour away. You must have heard of it. I think just about every serviceman in Europe has been there. They used to say, see Naples and die. Now it's cut loose in Heliopolis. It was one of the loveliest days in my life. I was sorry it came to an end. Just getting on the boat to go back made me miss the Isle of Levant. I hope I'd return. And I knew one thing. The next time, I'd take off the whole darn bikini. Just a day later, I was in Paris. What a difference from the Isle of Levant from the warm rays of the sun to the warm stares of my public. I just didn't know which made me happier. I was on the famed Champs-Élysées, the boulevard of broken dreams, the most famous street in the world. I made an appointment to visit Fernand Aubry. He's one of the most well-known cosmeticians in Europe. I could hardly wait to get on his fabulous workbench. I almost got lost, but one of those nice French policemen pointed the way. Fernand Aubry is famous all over Europe. Movie stars flock to him whenever they're in Paris. You can go in feeling grubby and heavy in the hips. When you come out, you feel like a teenager. I could see the change already. And now the time had come. Do you know how artists airbrush pictures? After an hour of total relaxation, I headed out into the streets again. In a few minutes, I was in the most fabulous shopping center in the whole world, the flea market. Everybody started here from scratch. It was just wild. Some people think you can only find junk here. But I met a woman who bought an original Picasso in a pile of old paintings. That's the beauty of the flea market. You never know what kind of treasure you can find. And it's really awfully cheap. Oh, you can get stuck if you come on like a real tourist. dog was eyeing my choo-choo, but I took good care of choo-choo. No French romance for him. You can get a lot of surprises if you don't watch yourself. The next morning, bright and cheery, I went off to see the Eiffel Tower. Hey, do you know it's the most famous monument in the entire world? That's right. Even the Empire State Building isn't as well known. Before going up the tower, a few Hell's Angels from Los Angeles rode up. When they offered me a spin, I couldn't resist. Support the boys from back home, you know. The M was from Malibu. Once around was enough for me.
Tower. Was built in 1889? That's so long ago. And high, 984 feet. Now even the Empire State Building is only a few feet higher than that. And the Eiffel Tower is so much older. I hope they never tear it down and put in a parking lot. So here was Paris, the city of dreams, of enchantment, where anything goes. A very beautiful city, but also a city of sin, of vice, and unashamed love. I just couldn't wait to see what further adventures Paris was going to offer. After all my wild, wild thoughts about what went on in Paris, I thought a little bit of culture might be nice. I got in a sightseeing boat, a trip around the Seine River. Oh, you've heard of it. Probably in those wonderful old horror movies. You know, the Phantom of the Left Bank. Anyway, the guide told me something I almost didn't believe. We always think of the Seine as a little river winding its way through Paris. But did you know that little old river is 480 miles long? It goes all the way to the English Channel. There are nicer things to do than spank a girl. We? Oui? It was a lovely trip. Ah, Paris. If only I had been lucky enough to be born here. Jean-Pierre J. Mansfield. I just had to go over and have a look at the Arc de Triomphe. Did you know that in 1806, Napoleon got the whole thing started? That's right. He had sort of kicked the stuffing out of everybody else in Europe and decided to let the rest of the world remember what he did. Oh, it's so grand going into a strange city and having people come up to you and say, Jane, give us your autograph, okay? Well, I'd had enough of the sightseeing bit. I went through the gate which said, keep out, don't enter. What the heck, I thought, live a little. This was my secret passage to the Paris underground world. That night, I went off alone to a way out nightclub. It was Chez Michaud, very in at the time. They said that everybody in the place was homosexual. That is, the people in girls' clothes were supposed to be girls. Oh, it was just too darn confusing. I just couldn't believe that some of those sweet-looking girls could possibly be men. And these two cute boys, believe it or not, are girls. I'm a little confused about these two. Then, two of the girls, I thought, came over. They just gushed over me and admired my figure. One of them said she was just green with jealousy. I laughed. I figured I was going through a great put-on.
twisting to the jungle drum. We were comparing hairdos. Then what do you think happened? I flipped. And here I was going to ask her to show me to the ladies' room. This, well, I think it was a boy, asked me to dance. What could I do? After all, a movie star is supposed to be a sophisticate. I think it was a guy. By the next morning, when I got out into the street, I tuned in to some of the funny stuff which went on in Paris. Like this little scene I saw right off the Champs-Élysées. It was a lesson in the life and times of your average Parisian. These men were soliciting, waiting for customers, just like those girls in Rome. Only these men were waiting for men. You've heard of Irma La Douce. You might call this scene Pierre La Douce. They like to drive a hard bargain here, too. I realize that everybody has a price in this world. Then I had to chuckle. Ooh la la, Paris. That chic girl, probably a patroness of the arts. And the boy, all he was interested in was the girl. Her form, her hair, her... Good for her. She doesn't stand still for that kind of baloney. Parisian girls have their pride. Oh, no. This is too much. There was this other scene which just sort of broke me up. I've seen guys try to pick up girls, but the same sex? Well, it was kind of fun to watch. In a way, I hoped the poor jerk would make it. To get away from the sorry sights I had just seen, I took a cab over to Montmartre. This is the center of painting in Paris, and you all know that Paris and painting are man and woman. All the great painters have lived for a while in Montmartre. You know, you can pick up something from an unknown which could be worth thousands later on. This one artist asked me to pose for a sketch. Why not, I figured. I might even wind up in a museum someday. He was cute. I'll bet he had more than one girlfriend hanging on to him. Artists in Paris lead very bohemian lives. I had to see more of the famous Parisian nightlife. 
girl I had met invited me to La Sexy. She worked there as a stripper. My stripper friend came over to say hello. I was fascinated. I'd always thought all you did was go on stage and take your clothes off. It was much more difficult. I could see that now. This was Pierre's striptease school. But this guy Pierre wasn't any boulou. Not even close. Pierre said he was familiar with all of Bulu's movements, but it wasn't like having Bulu himself. Pierre was good, but just good enough to be a chorus boy. was really something. <laughs> At least if I didn't learn how to strip, I'd lose a lot of weight. A friend had told me to go to the Eve Club. She said they had an act that was the living end. I couldn't resist. After all, we all like to see something just a bit wicked, right? After the two fellows had finished their routine, the MC announced the Adam and Eve dance. I was having just the greatest time of my life. Talk about fun. There were so many nightclubs to choose from. Where now? Where now? Ah, I remembered. The crazy horse. One of the most famous in the world. Like the Latin Quarter or the Copa in New York. I made up my mind, I'd go there. to cut my Paris trip short and fly back to the States. First stop, New York City. I had a whole day to myself before continuing on to Hollywood. A friend invited me to a beauty contest. I told him I'd had enough of that kind of thing. Then he said something which changed my mind. This was a beauty contest for boys. But they'd all be dressed like girls. And on top of that, it was highly illegal. We were really lucky the place wasn't raided. My studio wouldn't like that. I got there just as the contestants were arriving. I just couldn't believe my eyes. Why, well, these boys looked more feminine than those girls I knew. They were unbelievable. My gosh, they almost looked as though they were real girls. I'd seen some strange things in Europe, but this took all the cakes ever made. The crazy thing about this contest was that everybody in the place, except for me, was a boy. I could almost imagine some guy falling for one of these girls. It seems too harsh to say transvestites, which they are. There wasn't a real girl in the place. A couple of thousand years ago, men in Europe used to wear what looked like a dress. But at least you knew they were men. These days, you see someone with a sexy backside, long hair, very tight blue jeans, and when that person turns around, it's a guy with a long mustache. It sure is a mixed up world.
And the costumes. Did you ever see anything so fantastic? They look more like girls than a lot of girls do. the beauty queen, the tension was terrific. The boy girls were all twittering and giggling, laughing nervously. Poor dears. Each of them desperately wanted to be the queen of the ball. I could see the judges were having a difficult time deciding which one should get the title. I thought it would be a wild thing if I snuck into the line. But I'd be recognized. It would have been funny to have a real girl compete. But, you know, I don't think she'd win. There was something so absolutely feminine about this girl. It really was amazing. Even I would get arrested in a dress like that. Transvestite balls are underground affairs held twice a year. They're really hard to get invited to. Judges reached a decision. The winner, a lovely, slim girl. Boy, girl, oh well, let's call him a girl. That's what he wants to be. And tonight, he's queen of the ball. For one night, he was the most important queen in town. The losers retired to the ladies' room to cut their throats. Later, I met with one of the contestants. You've been called the Jane Mansfield female impersonator. Do you really think you look like me? Oh, I guess we do look alike a little. Well, do you like big, strong men like I do? Of course, honey. We're both looking for the same thing. What kind of men do you look for? Oh, as long as they're tall, dark, and handsome. Do you intend to ever become a real woman? Of course I do. That's the only thing in my life I'm waiting for. Till I can party like you. Will you have as many children as I have? No, I don't want children. Do you want to get in the movies? I'd love to be in the movies. I'm always willing to be a star. After my brief stay in New York, I was back in Hollywood. And did I notice the change? Wow. Even during the few months I was out of the country, the topless nightclubs and activities had mushroomed. Someone told me, that if my movie career ever stopped, I'd have a big future as a topless waitress. Driving around in a car, I saw the wildest topless things you could imagine. Oh well, I guess the whole world was going topless. I could see how I would end my strip routine in my next movie. 
just the way Sophia Loren did it in her picture yesterday, today, and tomorrow. A bulletin has just been handed to me. Hollywood star, the buxom and beautiful Jane Mansfield, is dead. She was killed instantly when the car she was riding in collided with a truck. Ironically, Jane Mansfield had a fear of cars. She had a superstition she would meet her end while driving. The house Jane Mansfield and Mickey Hargitay shared is more rightly called a mansion. It is one of Hollywood's largest homes with 17 rooms and a swimming pool. In Hollywood, it's known as the house that love built. A few days after the accident, Mickey Hargaday, Jane's second husband, returned to their home to relive old memories. The heart-shaped swimming pool where he and Jane had so much fun, where he taught Jane how to swim. Mickey built this pool with an inscription at the bottom which reads, I love you, Jane. Two of Jane Mansfield's sons, Miklos and Zoltan, are also here. Until the estate is settled, they will continue to live at this imposing mansion. The boys do not remember much about that tragic night. They were asleep in the back seat of the car. Only that saved them from certain death. Time will erase the memory of the accident. It will never erase the memory of their mother. Jane Mansfield was a starry-eyed romantic. She had a passion for love and a passion for heart-shaped objects. To Jane Mansfield, love was the reason for life. Without it, there would be no reason to live. From the time they were married 10 years ago, while she was still struggling to earn a place in show business, Mickey reminisces about their wonderful times together. He spends a few moments at the souvenir wall in their den, where hundreds of Jane's magazine covers are carefully framed. Jane was lifted to instant stardom in this Broadway comedy. She was a pal of many major film stars. This issue of Playboy featuring Jane is perhaps the most famous issue in its history. Manufacturers dedicated many products to her. You could even get a lifelike hot water bottle shaped like Jane. Jane Mansfield performed all over the world to millions of people. Jane Mansfield was one of the most publicized, most photographed sex symbols the world has ever known. She was also the symbol of the dumb blonde. Amazingly, though, Jane Mansfield had a degree from the University of Texas. Her IQ was a startling 163, among the top 5% in the nation. Yet, she chose show business as a career, instead of her original goal to be a scientist. Everything in the house is left exactly as it was. Jane's shoes laid out as though she were coming home this evening. Who can fill these shoes? The era of the great stars may have come to an end with her death. Mickey at the piano he bought Jane for their first wedding anniversary. It seems so long ago. Mickey remembers many things. He remembers how happy they were together. He remembers the good days, the golden days before his world began to crumble. He remembers the movies, the magazines, the hysterical fans. He remembers 
the good times, the bad times. It's as if he were saying, Jane, my poor Jane, you were such a wonderful girl. I'll never forget our first meeting. You looked so beautiful. Could I ever, could I ever love another as much as I loved you? Could I ever expect to find the same happiness we once shared? I'm sad for the children, to have you taken from them forever. I'll never forget you. Wherever you are, I hope we'll meet again. Inside these walls, the world knew Jane Mansfield as a sex pot, a symbol of the sensuous woman. Inside these walls, she was a model mother, a fine homemaker, a type we may never see again. The voice of Jane Mansfield will never again caress a child or soothe a man. And so ended the wild, wild world of Jane Mansfield. She was a true star.